repeatedly said we're going to lose the next couple of elections. No, we're going to lose 2022. 2024 is still a toss-up. Anyway, the, the thing that I want to be insistent on here is that the threat of Republicans overturning democracy is not one which the Democrats can stop, only delay. And insofar as that, you know, we, we have two other like basic like modes of operation here, two other ways of handling this, okay? The propaganda game and the direct action game. Not really separate things, but I'll separate them here for, you know, simplicity's sake. The propaganda game, okay? You gotta get people, mostly independents, on board with how fucking evil the Republicans are. I'm sorry, I do not think this, oh, well, maybe we can work together. This effort at like, you know, like what Crystal Ball does with Sauger, this effort at bipartisanship by any other name, what Biden does, no, I don't buy it, you know. I believe I can bring people over to the left with my messaging, but we're talking about a country with hundreds of millions. Not everyone can be a Vosh, you know? So we have to turn to other forms of optical engagement. And by the way, you can convince people with this, you know? Shame is an effective political motivator. Why should Republicans not feel shame? For what reason should they not be ashamed? They should be ashamed. They should feel deeply ashamed. They should be stigmatized publicly, ostracized from public life. They are the advocates for anti-democracy, for the uh, systemic oppression of LGBT people, the revocation of women's civil rights, and trans men and non-binary people. Kablamo, still woke, thank you. They should be ashamed. So shame them. Treat them, the, treat them a tenth as bad as they wish the government would allow them to treat you. That's all I'm saying. Simple as that. And you can move people over. And I think that's an effective way of doing so. It's a different strategy, but it's a real strategy. And it would be dishonest of me to sit here and not say that and not feel that way. Are we moving fast enough for that to work? We better. We can try. It's not like I'm the Democratic Party. Maybe you can move people over that way. And as for direct action, you know, Things are only going to get worse, especially in red states. We had people, uh, what was it, Molotoving that office just a couple days ago following the Roe v. Wade shenanigans. That's only going to increase. Now, of course, I am holistically against political violence, just across the board. It's uh, inconceivable to me that something like that could bring about progressive outcomes. But, you know, it does not escape my memory that agitation against doctors who perform abortions has for decades stigmatized uh, those doctors, stigmatized people seeking an abortion, that harassment against certain institutions has brought about a change in the outcomes of that institution. Stuff like this is only going to get more common with time. And, you know, when it happens, we have to be ready to respond. Same way as with the arson during Black Lives Matter, though a lot of that arson just happened to happen in residential neighborhoods. And um, on the other hand, you know, Molotov through the window of some, what was it, some legal office, anti-abortion, you know, worse things have happened. You can focus on ballot initiatives too. None of this is mutually exclusive. It can't convert everyone. Kazoo noises, you can't convert everyone. You can convert maybe one in ten, one in five at most people, hypothetically, given an infinite amount of time. You can't convince everyone. You can bring independence over. That can be a little more effective. And that's why I talk about the fear. You know? That's why I talk about the fear. See, if you take a look at polling done here in the United States about how many people vote Democrat, Republican, isn't it something like 30, 40, 30? 30 Dem, 40 Independent, as in they don't vote, as in non-voters, you know, and then 30 Republican. I mean, give or take, right? 30, 40, 30, thereabouts, right? Memory's a bit foggy here, but it's not a lot. There are a lot of non-voters. Some, something like that, right? Hold on. Non-voters 2020 election. Even 2020 with record, 80 million Americans did not vote. Okay, about 67% of eligible voters cast ballots. In the year with the record election turnout for both parties, two-thirds of the country voted. A third didn't. Now, 
The reason for that is because a lot of those non-voters just can't be bothered. They don't think there's much of a difference day to day, regardless of who's in power. And I think they're wrong. But if you take a look at polling done on other issues, you rarely see this level of indecisiveness. If you ask voters how they feel about any political issue, support for Ukraine, Medicare for all, whatever, a third of the country isn't going to not have an opinion. That is to say, the third of the country that is not participating in elections doesn't mean this third is apolitical. It doesn't even mean they're undifferentiated. It means they're unconcerned, unengaged. And you know what gets people engaged? Fear. Legitimate fear. That's what we need to harp on. Democrats have failed to get these people, in large part because Democrats have historically failed to deliver the golden shining city on the hill that they've promised. Republicans have failed to get these people because Republicans uh, promote messaging largely based on racism and economic anxiety, which is just a framework for racism. And apparently that doesn't reach all Americans, you know. A lot of people out there, hard to reach, but fear is real. Fear is legitimate. It affects everyone. It's a biochemical response to a threat to one's person. And what Republicans are doing right now is a threat to everyone in this country. So I think it's possible to reach them more effectively with more determined anti-Republican advocacy than you could get with this, well, what if we all work together to build this or that? Because these people don't vote for that. They came out in droves in 2020 because either Democrats or Republicans had made them su sufficiently fearful of the other side. Now, maybe, maybe this is a, um, you're right, we have to be Batman for using fear for good. No, no, no. Maybe this makes some people uncomfortable. Does anybody here think that what I'm talking about is, uh, is amoral in the slightest? Because I think this fear, the fact that people aren't fearful is to me the immoral thing. You know, the fact that there are Americans who aren't fully aware of the fact that the Democrats are not going to be able to stop Republicans who are fully signaling their intention to end democracy. Like, I think the fear is useful. I think this is useful info. I think that I am as much of an alarmist on this issue as Al Gore was on climate change or hell, as much as I am on climate change. I think the alarmism we demonstrate is reasonable and proportional, but it's just a belief of mine. Anyway, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point, and I don't mean to. Do the viewers even know who Gore is? There's a lot of Zoomers here. God, you're right, there are people watching who can vote who might not have been around for an inconvenient truth. Ooh, that is weird.